And so I will wait for the red light to go disappear. I will give it a few minutes and then do the pilot until it turns blue. Then I'll turn it on. Okay. So. And then it'll run for five minutes? Five minutes, yeah. And then it'll flash seven? Correct. Okay. All right. You probably, it's, well, you kind of have one sort of there. Yeah, I guess you're doing all right. Yeah, usually sometimes the set sometimes you'll get sediment in those valves. Right. You know, so are you a plumber you or have something? The, no, but I've been doing stuff like this forever. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I use this chair? Of course. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever you need, man. Oh yeah. Where's your gas detector you were talking about? I have one over here. Oh, I'm dying to see that. Ah, uh, it's an older one. I got to I got to get one of the Oh shoot, what happened to your uh, thermopile here? Well, I went to go disconnect and then the damn thing came off. So, I, I have new, uh, I have the little inserts, so I'll just crimp them back on. Oh, okay. But right now, I've just been doing contact. Try needle nose pliers, you know, if you get a grip on it. Yeah, if you and, look at it. And you grab the wire, you kind of pull it all as one. 15 seconds at very hot, 15 seconds at hot, 15 seconds at pilot, and then you... It's been about 15 seconds and you repeat it, which forces it to kick back over again. And usually about, and this is when it's flashing, right? Right. But it's only if the burner assembly fires up. If it will not come up at all, which sounds like probably what it was doing. Yes. Right? Um, and it just dies. It just dies and the little light, the red one will turn on. Um, yeah, if it doesn't come up, then it's pretty much the valve. So we're, we're probably changing the valve today just to make sure, you know. Perfect. That, that works for me. But I was just curious if a reset would work on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like five minutes, but it's probably inconsistent, huh? Yeah, it's inconsistent. Uh, right. Sometimes I'll have plenty of time to go shower. Like this morning, uh -huh. I got two showers out of it, and then it, uh -huh. went, it went red. Oh, uh, okay. Uh -huh. So your gas line's not, um, but it's been running. It ran fine since 2020, right? <laughs> yeah, when we purchased a home... <coughs> About a year and a half ago now, uh -huh. it was it came, it was brand new. Okay. And not one issue until recently. I was like, dang it. Okay. Did you add any gas appliances at all to your house, like a barbecue or a new dryer or anything mm -hmm. like Everything that? Everything is propane. The dryer was installed roughly about the same time. Same thing with the stove. Okay. But again, everything's been running perfectly fine. Yeah, because if you get like a, a a pressure drop, you know, on your gas, mm -hmm. it could mess with it. Well, because the BTUs have to be a certain amount yeah, i think it's 40 that well that's 38 this is 000. 38 yeah yeah but i've seen some funky stuff happen on uh 50 gallons mm -hmm. like people that run like the dryer size supply lines to them right. you know so the vo it's too small yeah so the volume like if you keep getting issues with it you could always go up to like a 7 8 right line if you want i know that's kind of you gotta throw money at it well I'm pretty but sure. that won't hurt you right. know more gas won't hurt um, well, the problem that i'm having is like this morning, it started really smelling like gas here. And oh, so right. I had turned it off here. Okay. It was, I smelled it stronger here. So that's how I think it's, the line has been fine, but I agree with you there. The more gas, the better, and it can regulate as it needs it, but it'll still have it there versus- Yeah, just in hit. case you run your dryer and you're cooking at the same mm -hmm. time and, and you happen to hit it, you might have some kind of pressure drop. All right, well, let's get this valve in there for you. Perfect, appreciate that. So this is a uh, service call for a ream. It's a 2020. Uh, the guy's got a chronic code seven or a code fault seven. So we are changing the gas valve. Uh, owner ripped out the, um, the wires. 
out of the connector. A lot of service calls this week. Like two yesterday and one every other day this week. Uh, let's see what's going on. So these uh, these thermal pile wires come with uh, it's like a red um, insulation that's put over the wire. So the wire is copper and it blocks the signal from getting through so you got to kind of scrape that off which is really difficult to do. I got it. Turn the gas back on. Yeah. Pray to God this thing doesn't come up with a nine flash on me. So, always helps to purge when you're lighting these things. So, I put a bunch of uh, air through the pilot tube and through the main gas burner. So, uh, which are these two lines right here. So, there's air in the line. So, we're just getting the gas to flow and purge through here and make its way inside. So, we can get the pilot light lit. There's a lot of... There we go. You probably can't see it with all this. Oh, shoot, I just touched the. I just touched that mess. So I stripped back. You might be able to see the sheath on there, the red sheath. I tried to strip it back to the copper so it'll make a better connection. There we go. Hopefully it comes up blue. We got blue. Anyway, that's the easy way to change the valve. You take the shut the gas off, take the cover off, disconnect the pilot tube, disconnect the main burner tube, pull the thermal pile. I highly recommend that you use a pair of needle nose pliers. What I do is I grip all of the black um, electrical connector and then I hold the wire down below and I kind of pull them all out at the same time. So that way you're not, you don't rip these wires loose. 
and uh, disconnect the chamber sensor. You want to make sure you shut it down before you disconnect the chamber sensor. That's the mistake I made. Otherwise, you're going to get a, uh, a 9 flash, which is the chamber sensor failure. And take the cover off and disconnect the gas line. Then the whole valve is held in with one screw and two tabs, one on the left and one on the right. You just use a screwdriver to kind of pry those back. And the entire valve comes out like this. So this is the entire valve assembly. All right, so this is what controls the gas. Uh, basically turns it on and off. And then there's a circuit board uh, that controls that, right? Sends the voltage. The voltage is actually less than a volt. So it's in the mill millivolt range. And then there's a wire that comes through in the back and that actually tells the circuit board what the water temperature is so that's the temperature of the water so if the water is cold it will allow it to turn on if it's at temperature which you decide right here on your gauge then um, it will not turn on and uh, you can pop the new valve in and then you just kind of reverse everything back in just make sure things are snug down pretty good you don't need to over tighten it you don't need to use Teflon tape if you want to use anything, any kind of lubricant, use a small amount of pipe dope. Um, this valve actually came with this um, adapter on here and somebody used Teflon tape. That's a great way to crack these valves. So you can see here's the pipe dope. That's much better than Teflon tape. Teflon tape will bind up, creates too much tension and this is aluminum and you can crack the aluminum valve. So I did an examination of it first to make sure it wasn't make sure it wasn't cracked. Everything's running. And just another code seven. I tried the reset procedure on it, but um, it just it went seven anyway, or at least it was going nine. I think it was going nine. But yeah, this is your typical code seven, making me money. Thanks a lot, Honeywell, for these uh, overly sensitive uh, dysfunctional valves. You have uh, padded my pockets well. But you can convert these over. So you can put like a mechanical valve in here. And then you have to change the pilot assembly over to one that will, um, that will have a thermocouple. Because the older mechanical valves require a thermocouple that's less than 30 millivolts. These require a thermal pile, thermo pile that's about 750 800 millivolts and that all that extra voltage runs the circuit board anyway thank you for watching consider subscribing to the channel hope uh, this video helps somebody out and have a great day